out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pound, man. I appreciate the love. Boom, 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 boom. I appreciate the support. Appreciate you, man. Everybody out there who been rocking with me, everybody out there who on Team Banky Pound Nation, we out here, man. 33 years of prison stores and we rolling. We rolling up into 2023. We putting it in, man. We putting that work in, man. Y'all work with me. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We on the road to 100K, 100K. Let's go. Let's get there. Let's get there. Um, man, today something sparked my, my, my memory that made me want to just talk about this subject. It's crazy. Uh, we talk about having a CO's personal information. <laughs> personal information. When I mean personal information, man, you know their real name. You know where they live at. You know what city they from. You know what kind of car they drive. Man, if you come up with this type of information, man, you talking about changing the whole uh, uh, person's attitude. <laughs> you talking about a, a, a attitude adjustment. <laughs> you talking about it some get right. Man, they be terrified because they don't know what you're going to do with that information, number one. And number two, they don't know how you got that information. But, man, over the years I've seen that happen, man, when these COs come in there and they get to snatching and talking trash and trying to handle you and belittle you and talk, and you get, dudes get to spitting out, oh, man, well, I know, already know. I mean, you talking to that, man, come on, Billy, I know where you live at, man. You live at such, such, and such, 24 uh, uh, 3rd Street, man. Man, you drive a Bronco, man. Come on, man. Your wife come out there every morning, man. You, you hit them with that? Man, first thing they're going to do is try to get you locked up. <laughs> they're going to try to get you locked up because they terrified. Oh, that ain't me. It's exactly you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, like, who you been talking to? What you got? Uh, okay, all right, I'm going to get you locked. And you're going to get locked up. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get locked up. They're going to go and tell them, oh, you spread their personal information. Somebody else might get it and then something could happen to you. They at risk. Woo, woo, woo. You get locked up. But... You know, you got some dudes, they get so bold, they say, all right, go ahead and get me locked up. Get me locked up and watch what happened. Man, you talking about fear? <laughs> you talking about fear? You talking about these dudes walking around here in these uniforms, popping all that trash like they killers and they this, that, and the third, but you the one that's locked up. But they talking like they killers, and you get to let them know that you know where they live, where they drive, what their name is, where they went to school at. Oh man, they get some get right in them. <laughs> they they some of them pull up on you one what's look, man, we, who told you that? One of these COs told you that, man. Who is it, man? Just tell me who it is, man. I mean, okay, I ain't gonna bother you no more, but look, this I mean, who said that? They scared to death, dog. <laughs> they scared to death. And what sparked my memory about this was I seen a documentary before, right? The documentary was crazy. It was about the feds. It was in the feds. It was a federal prison system. Even No, it was not a documentary. It was a book I read. It was a book I read. I think the book was called, I think the book was called The Hot House. Was it The Hot House? I think it, it, I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember, but I think it was called The Hot House. And it was about federal prison. It might have been Leavenworth, um, but it was a federal prison. And what happened was, they had a mob boss in there, and the mob boss was old now. He was old. He was, you know what I'm saying? He had did all he had did on the street. He was locked up or whatever. And they had this CO that just used to hound him and hound him and hound him and just stay on him and stay on him. And, um, you know, the mob boss was locked up, but he still had that power. He still had that reach out there. So what he did was he got to some people on the street and got them people to go get some information on this CO. So then when he get a visit, he get a visit from his people and he wait until he get ready to lead the visit. I said something about this in one of my videos before, but that's where it came from. And he get ready to leave that visit room and um, 
he makes sure that that officer who always worked the visit room, who always hound him, see him grab something and put it in his shirt. He wanted the officer to see him do that. So when he did that and he get back there, the officer is all like happy. I got you now. I saw you. You put something in your shirt. I got you, man. What? Script search. Take everything off. I, I got you. I saw you. And when he starts strip searching and everything, then he see it, he grab it, and it's a picture. And when the officer unwrap it and look at the picture, it's him leaving his house in the morning with his kid and his wife kissing him before he leave. And the officer like in like shock, and he look at him and like, and the, and the, and the mob dude tell him, say, yeah, it's just that easy. Never had a problem with him again. <laughs> never had a problem with it again and that's what it's like in the state penitentiary when you if you get their information they don't know who you know they don't know how you know they don't know who close to them or who watching them and makes them feel paranoid you know what I'm saying it makes them feel uneasy around you and then they scared to cross you most of them because they don't know what's gonna happen when they go home you see what I'm saying so it's crazy, man, and I, I've seen it over the years, man. Um, I've, I've even had personal uh, experiences with it. But one of the first things that pop in my mind about it is this this female, man, I was on this institution, man. Anybody who's on this institution know who I'm talking about. But they had this female named Miss Doyle. And when I tell you, huh, bar none, she was the baddest female on the compound. You know, didn't even look like she should be working there. She was, she was gorgeous. Body was just out of this world. Um, personality was sweet. You know what I'm saying? Voice was soft and tender. She just was, she just was uh, something to behold, and even more so in the penitentiary. So, um, everybody and their mama <laughs> was trying to get with her in one way or another. I mean, the COs, the lieutenants, the sergeants, the captains, the majors, the wardens, the inmates, the convicts, everybody wanted to get at Doyle because she was so fine, you know, and, 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 and sweet with it, you know. So her, her personality matched her looks, you know, which is, you know, oxymoron because you're working in prison, you know what I'm saying? You, you can't be nice working in prison. They don't like you like that. They don't want you like that. But being that she was so fine, they dealt with her, but usually when they get a CO coming in, even a female, if she acting like fair, fair to inmates, fair to convicts, you know, nice to everybody, just want to do her job and go home, act you out of there. Now nah, you don't qualify. Now nah, you don't qualify. We need you to oppress, make people depress. We need you to suppress. Hey, we, that's what they want. You know what I'm saying? And if you come in there with that, they don't want you. You know, and that's how she was. But for her, they made an exception because all of them trying to, you know, put their little beard in. Man, I spoke of Doyle before. I'm almost sure in different videos, probably not in depth. But Doyle got so many dudes fired. So many dudes bust down to a lower a rank. Um, so many dudes sent home on suspension. All because they trying to get at her. Man, they done propositioned this woman at work. They done offered her this. They done offered her that. They done said, I get you a better job over here. I get you a better position. I mean, it was just crazy, man. And she walked on that compound. When she come down that boulevard, and it's the morning time for breakfast or something, she walking down that boulevard. Everybody on that boulevard, the, the, the captains, lieutenants, all of them be out there in the morning. Everybody's just like this. Somebody could be getting killed over here. Everybody is watching Doyle and her walk. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. And she worked my block. And she was really a sweetheart. She was a sweetheart for sure. You know what I'm saying? But, man, it was just like she didn't even want to get the officers, you know, that she got in trouble, in trouble. It's just that they just went too far. Just because she was such a sweetheart, that's a dude. That's in a dude's nature. That's how it is in the penitentiary. You show meekness, they, they, they take it for weakness. You show kindness, they take it for softness. So she was just being kind, like, no, turning down the propositions. No, I won't do this. I, I, I'm doing. And they just, they, they get aggressive. You know what I'm saying? They get more aggressive. Man. The stories I've heard, 
Man, she's been in like staff bathrooms and 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 uh, supervisors, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, so on. So then opened the door and it came into to the staff bathroom, trying to proposition her. You know what I'm saying? They done came in there and exposed themselves. These is these is workers. These is people who work. These ain't no convicts and no inmates gunning. These is police, COs, doing this type of stuff to her on her break. You know what I'm saying? You know, offering her this, propositioning her, uh, offering her a better position, all of this type of stuff just to get with her. You know what I'm saying? And she was, you know, fighting all of that down and trying to, oh, no, you know, trying to be PC, politically correct. But then when it got too much, she started, you know, screaming on people and telling on them and reporting them. And they started getting drop down in rank, fired, uh, suspended for 60 days, suspended for 90 days, all behind trying to get at Doyle, right? So, I say all that to say this. Now, you know, it was no different on the other side. You know, all the inmates, wanted, you know, the inmates in the convicts, they trying to get it with most women, let alone someone is, is you know what I'm saying, put together as her. So, everybody trying to get at her. So, it's a CO in there, right, that I knew. Right. I didn't personally know him on the street, but I had close affiliation with someone who grew up with him. So me and him, it got kind of cool. And I was the barber, you know what I'm saying? And you know I'm nice with them skills, man. I put you in there like a hey, McNeil, you understand me? So he cheap. <laughs> he cheap and pet his own or what. So, you know, he used to come up there and say, uh, yo, uh, yeah, hey, bang, man, let me get a haircut, man. I said, all right, I got you, man. I'm Because they don't go out on the street and pay that money. So he's like, man, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to get you up here, man. I'm going to go in the chemical class. So I used to go in the chemical class. Yeah, all this breaking rules. and Just let you know they can do what they want to do. I used to go in the chemical class with him and cut his hair, right, when he on his break. Cut his hair. Give him, I don't know how he was getting away with that. You came in work this morning with your hair looking like, you know, a, a, a Frankenstein, and then you're leaving with this old shop haircut. I don't know how your supervisor ain't know. Hey, how you get your haircut? I don't know, but he was getting away with it because I did it quite a few times, right? And he ain't giving me nothing. You know, a, a, a sandwich out the vending machine, you know what I'm saying? With, you know, with that real, real... Uh, 100% Angus beef though, but I won't, I won't mad, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm getting him this, you know, $100 haircut and I'm getting a $5 sandwich, you know? So, yeah, fair exchange ain't no robbery, I guess. But yeah, man, so uh, he tried to get with him and was unsuccessful. So being that me and him was kind of cool, where I could talk to him because I'm cutting his hair, he tell me little different things. So I asked him about her one day. And he started telling me everything. Yeah, he tried to get with her. He almost did, but you know he couldn't. She got a boyfriend, and she could sing. She be singing in clubs and everything. That's what she really wanted to be was a singer. But you know she ain't found a big break yet. That's why she working there, which explains why you know because like I said, she had the look and everything. So you know he was like, yeah, man. So you know me and my homeboy, man, my homeboy was hollering at her girl, and I was trying to get at her, but it ain't work out, man. Woo woo woo. But uh, yeah, man, she was playing. Games. Games, man, with me, woo, woo, woo. So I'm like, yeah. So he's like, I said, how you know? It's oh man, she stay around my way. She stay around there, you know what I'm saying? She ain't from there, but she stay there. So I said, where that's at? He started just telling me everything. I knew she lived there. I said, man, listen, tell me, you know, some information about a man so I can use that, see if I can cut into it. And he just, just dead easy. He told me where she lived, told me what type of car she drive, uh, told me her age, told me her real name, all of this stuff. Now, mind you, back in this time, now I'm in my flim flammery. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm single at the time. I'm trying to get with her too. You know what I'm saying? Cause she was, she was nice. You know, so, uh, and she was cool with me. She always talked to me. But you know, I can remember, man. Um, you know, pulling up on and talk to her. She called me up there. I was talking to her, whatever, whatever. And I said uh, something, something to the effect about, uh, you know, uh, what type of car she drive or whatever. I was like, yeah, that's a nice little green such and such that you got, whatever it was, right? She was like, how you know that? And I was like, oh, man, you know, I know some people that know some people, right? So she was like, oh, no, no. I said, well, I got to go right now. Though. I'll come back and holler. She was like, no, come back, come back. Because she, she, I got her. You know what I'm saying? I got her. You know, her mind going there like, hold on, hold on. How you know that? 
So I go, I come back up there about an hour or something later. She done told two or three people to come get me, tell me, come up there. I act like I'm busy. I'm cutting hair. But she wanted to know how I know. So, you know what I'm saying? I ended up going back up there and she just asked me all day, the rest of the day, how you know that? Who you know that I know? And da 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 But he had provided me with so much information that I could just keep feeding her little tits and tats and keep her curiosity going and keep our conversation going. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I was doing for a minute. And it got crazy though because, man, just so happens. Who would have thunk it? Even in my flim flammery, who would have thunk it? Man, I've been cursed. I've been cursed with uh the 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 the, the uh I've been cursed with with, with 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 the thing of having um uh, what you call it um a conscience. <laughs> I got a conscience, man. So I felt bad because even though she was super fine and I'm, you know, you know, super late, I, I couldn't get into her like that. I didn't want to try to cut into her on no flim flammery or whatever, whatever. If she she did like me, I wanted her to like me on her own. Then I just started feeling soft for her, man. Like she was cool, she was a good person, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't wanna play no games with her, nothing like that. So I eventually told her, I was like, nah, I ain't telling him, cause that would be snitch. I told Isaac, like, nah, nah, I just know somebody who know the information that I'm cool with, he told me, but I don't know nobody who really know you or nothing like that. I said, I think the person who told me is just salty with you, so he just gave me that information. I said, but you ain't got to worry about it. I ain't going to tell nobody. I ain't going to say nothing. Woo, woo, woo. And she was like, oh, I appreciate that. And that's who is it? I said, I can't tell you who said it, but she was like, that's just dirty. That's wrong. I don't bother nobody. And they telling my person, they just mad. They just, oh, I don't know why they, and she was all, and that even made me feel even more bad, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so we ended up just being cool, man, and, um, I and she started telling me all her personal information herself. Then you know how she been singing, how long she been singing, what her dreams is. You know she had a fiance, she had a child, and you know. And I just was all right with it. And, it, and I've had CEOs like that over the years that I was just cool with, and it won't nothing like we trying to do nothing. And she, they just was cool. They felt like they could confide in me because they felt like I was easy to talk to. And um, like I say, man, I, I was cursed with the conscience, man. I can't, I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? But man, she was fine. She was super fine. Yeah, she fine, man. But I ain't, I ain't want it like that, man. I ain't, I ain't on it like that. But um, yeah, we just end up being cool though. But she, she got a lot of, she got a lot of them in the mix, man. Trying to get with her by any means necessary. And um, I remember the biggest one I think was a captain, man. And, um, you know, captain is like, you got the warden, system warden, major captain. Man, he got busted. He was the, one of the nastiest captains there, man. He got busted all the way down to like a regular officer. And I think I explained to y'all before in these videos that you'll say to yourself, how can you be all these people bosses and handling them and handling them? Then you get busted all the way down to their same rank and then you're on the same level with them. And then you got to deal with them and you can't tell them nothing to do. And now they're going to turn on you because you don't got that power no more. Why would a person come back to work and be ridiculed like that? Even the inmates going to ridicule them. Oh, yeah, you lost your rank. Yeah, you, you, you try to get, a, get with the girl. And yeah, that's what happened to you, a pervert. Yada. Why would they subject themselves to that? Why? Because they can't lose their pension. They don't want to lose that pension. They can stay there. And even if they make it, this is how crazy the system is. Even if they make it up there, the captain, lieutenant, major, warden, whatever pay they get. If they get bust down, they lose the rank and keep the pay. So he working as a regular officer, but he's still getting captain's pay. So that's why he take that abuse, you know, which was well deserved in his case. But um, those are the type of things that go on in there, man, when... When you get that personal information, man, on somebody, man, it's 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 crazy though. But Doyle, she she had the whole compound in a frenzy, man. And she ended up quitting. She ended up quitting. I don't know if she got a singing gig or whatever, because she could actually sing. I've I've heard her sing. She sung, you know, uh, in the booth for me. I heard she can really sing. So you know, hopefully she you know got on and, and did something with her life and got a good career, cause uh. She had a lot going for her, man, and definitely won't get it done in the penitentiary. 
you know, so shout out to her if she out here and get this video one day, you know, uh, wish you nothing but the best. But, um, uh, yeah, and I had some other encounters with this personal information too. This was later on, you know, when I, you know, came in contact with the cell phones and everything, and I'm, 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 I'm messing with these cell phones. And, um, I ended up messing with a female CEO that was there when I had the cell phone. Man, her got, you know, we got real tight. We got super cool. I spoke on this before. And, um, man, we was talking every night on the cell phone. She come to work. I be talking to her at work till she got moved. And then she go home. Soon as she get home, she call me, man. I be talking to her sometime on the telephone till like four, five in the morning, man. She got to be to work at six o'clock. You know what I'm saying? It was it was just crazy. But in the process of talking to her all this time, she had a cousin that worked there and her cousin was a pure donkey, a Jack ASS. And he was on the tech team and he did all of this Bama stuff, this flim flammery, this skull duggery, this larceny. You know, he wanted to run in with they, you know, this is when they got the little dudes in the Ninja Turtle suits and they run in and beat you up or they try to sneak in on you two, three in the morning, catch you dirty with some drugs or some contraband. They, that's the tag team. And he was a part of it. You know, it's only like a certain amount of them on the compound, but they got to go through training, this, that, and that. But he won up. So he walk around all the time acting like he a tough guy. Acting like his life's so much better than ours. Like, we locked up. Y'all ain't got nothing going on. I'm out here doing this. I got this many girls. I had sex every night. I, you know, I pop, you know, you, all of that type of stuff. They come at you like that with that foolishness and try to make you feel worse than you already feel because you locked up and, and, and they coming in there, you know, shooting stuff at you and you go back at them. So then that they're only, uh, you know, defense is, well, I'm on the street. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I might, and you know, some of them to get so belligerent, they say, oh, yeah, I'll probably see your girl tonight. Yeah, I'll probably be out. You don't even know I'm with you. They come with all, man, you be one them, knock, 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 mm, yeah, you know, but that's going to cost you. You know what I'm saying? They not going to be held accountable for what they do and the things they say to you, but you're going to be held accountable for the things you say to them and the things you do. So that's the, you know, that's the uh, uh, crazy part about the situation, man. You know, it ain't, it ain't no fairness in it whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? But he was one of them. Now, with that being said, this like his cousin. You know what I'm saying? He has no idea what me and her got going on. None whatsoever. Once I found out she was his cousin, I almost pulled away from him because I was just that scared. Like, oh, Lord, this dude find out, man. I'm getting ready to go through the ring or they getting ready to drag me, you know what I'm saying? And God knows what else. So she was like, oh no. And she was a cool person. Cool. Shout out to her. I ain't gonna call her name. You know who you are, you know, if this ever come across you. But she was said, she was like, no, I ain't gonna do that. I never do that. He ain't gonna know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right. you know, and I believed her, you know what I'm saying, to a certain extent. But she proved to be, you know, you know, uh, worthy and, and, and could hold water, right? But I could remember <laughs> talking to her and he came over the house and I could hear his voice and I knew it was his voice and I'm talking to her, but she on the phone. So I'm like, is that such a thing? Like, yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, he become, yeah, he come over here all the time. You know what I'm saying? And I could hear him just spilling beans, talking about his personal life, talking about what's going on with him. Nothing to the contrary of what he be making you believe in there. Crazy, right? So I'm like, oh. So then I remember when he ended up leaving, I was asking her. I started inquiring her information about him. And she started spilling. I knew everything about this cat, man. I knew everything about his whole life. I knew his situation was messed up. His wife had left him for another dude. He had been out of work for a minute. Because he said he broke his leg in an accident. She said, nah, he was running his mouth at the gas station. And a couple of dudes jumped him and broke his leg. I knew all of this stuff, man. And um, it was just, you know, ammunition that I had if I ever needed it. You know what I'm saying? And it was crazy because I'm like, man. You know, and, and it, it gave me a, a just a greater insight. Because even though, like I say, you know when they be popping all that stuff because you locked up that you know most of it ain't real. You know, if your life was that great, you wouldn't even be working in the penitentiary. That's been always been my reasoning. But they would tell you, it ain't nobody work there would ever try to make you think 
they, they got some problems going on. Everything in their life is peachy keen. Everything is groovy. Everything is a okay. If you let them tell it, but we know different, but you can't prove different. So it was like a, a sense of reality when I see it, even though, you know, even with her, you know, from the outside looking in, she was a nice looking girl, man. She was, you know, put together nice, everything. But you would look at her and think this, even though she didn't give you that type of uh, arrogance about her, but you would think this, and th but I knew her whole situation. I knew what she was living with. I knew her uh, baby dad, I knew she kids was, but I, I knew everything about her because she told me in conversation that we had got that cool and that close. But then to find out this about him and the way he acted, it just gave me like, okay, yeah, all these people just be willing. They coming in here acting like their life is so great. They struggling just like everybody else, but they just working in the penitentiary and they just have power over us because we at the bottom of the barrel. You know what I'm saying? So they take out all their frustrations and all their angles with life and disappointments on us. And it makes us feel a certain type of way. And in some type of way, psychologically, dudes will believe that their life is so much greater than ours. And in some ways it is because they're free. But to let you think that they living out there like Jay-Z and Beyonce is just some super duper fabrication. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> I can remember knowing all that information about him, knowing how dirty he was. Knowing how arrogant he was, knowing how he always walked around with his chest poked out and all this and all that. I was like, man, boy, if you ever come at me with this flim flammery, <laughs> boy, I got some ammunition for you. You know, and lo and behold, man, like I had told y'all when all of that stuff had happened and I ended up getting tore off with the phone and now I'm locked up and I know I'm getting shipped and I'm back there in the hole. Man, when the tag team don't have nothing going on where they setting up some type of uh, sneaky operation where they gonna run down on people and be shaking the whole compound up. They got to work regular posts. He had to work back there in the jail while I'm back there. And he come back there, man, every day on his shift and he arguing with dudes back there. Two or three dudes he beefing with and arguing with all the time. Called them all outside their name, talking stick, talking about how he, oh uh, yeah, I seen your wife last night at the club. And all, he, he was just nasty with it. So remember I just told y'all a story not long ago about Erky B, Eric Blizzard. Blizzard back there. Blizzard can do what he want to because they can't transfer Blizzard. Blizzard, Blizzard, you know what I'm saying, on dialysis. He done been there 20 years. He ain't going nowhere no matter what he do. He can kill somebody on the compound. He going in the hole until whatever time is allotted to him and he coming back out. He can't go nowhere because this is the only place that can, you know, deal with his illness. So Blizzard act how he want to act and he ain't scared to be in the hole. So he get to run his mouth to Blizzard one day and Blizzard got a nasty mouth on him, man. Blizzard was blazing him up because dude was real dark skin. Oh, you black choco boy, Negro, and blah, blah, blah. They going at it. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Man, he got at Blizzard so bad and then Blizzard wanted to get at him so Blizzard started talking about throwing that cocktail on him, you know, that old feces and pee pee and all of that other stuff. And rotten milk all mixed up and yeah, douse him. But he gonna get a street charge for that. But Blizzard was talking about doing, and they gonna go in there and whoop viciously. But I was telling Blizzard when he left, I was like, Blizzard, me holler at you, Mike. <laughs> he was like, what up? Yeah, what up, man? He got that deep voice, I tell you. I said, look, I'm gonna tell you how to get at him. But you can't say too much, and you can't put my name in it. Blizzard said, what up? Talk to me. What, 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 what? And man, I had to write it down and set to him so the information won't go to everybody else. So I had to write it on the kite because if I holler it out, everybody gonna hear it and everybody gonna be blasting. Them. So I sent it over there to Blizzard's kite. I gave Blizzard, I told him what his real name was. I told him how he got his leg broke. I told him his wife left him and I told him the name of the dude she left him from. He crying trying to get him back now. Oh my God. Oh Lord. <laughs> Blizzard hollered over there, Blizzard said, oh, he's on there. When he come back to work, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> and just didn't believe me, he killed him, man. 
Man, that man came back to work, man, and Blizzard, he got to run his mouth, man. Oh, man, shut up, man. That way you locked up now. Yeah, you you better be getting me to go to dialysis make sure you don't die. Blizzard said, you better be making sure your wife leave John or you die or commit suicide. Dude say, what? What you say? Yeah, what I said. Yeah, you know your wife left you for John, and yeah, you been crying and begging her to come back while he putting that in her, boy. He turned her up. Uh, I know John. Yeah, he said good, too. Man, this dude lost his mind. <laughs> man, this dude almost got fired, man. That man go to Blizzard door, man. That man was calling on the radio trying to tell the people open the door, which is illegal. Blizzard said, yeah, come on up in here. Come on, Eric and B gonna show you. Yeah, come on up in here. He was like, man, what you, what you talking about? You don't know my wife. You don't even know what you talking about. I must know. Look how you acted. I must know. You want me to tell you her name? Yeah, what's her name? Blizzard called her name out, man. That, that, hey, he lost his mind, man. The people had to come back there, the other officers, and get him to get him up out of there. Because he trying to get at Blizzard. No, he know some of my personal information, man. He know my people, man. I don't know. Uh-uh. No, no. He got to go. Blizzard can't go. <laughs> Blizzard, can't, Blizzard can't get transferred. He want Blizzard gone because he's scared Blizzard going to share that information with everybody else. And everybody else on the compound going to know his personal information. And he can feel like, I'm going to be at risk. I'm going to be I'm gonna be in danger. People know my wife. People know where I live at. People, I mean, I can't have him here. He can't go nowhere. His medical supersede all that. He's stuck and he want to kill Blizzard, man. He want to kill. I'm over there laid up in my cell like this. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, but he deserved it. I'm telling y'all, I know y'all probably saying that, man, man, you crazy, you wrong. Man, he deserved it. He was dirty. He was nasty. He looked, if, he, if somebody sent him this right now, if he run across, you deserved it. Yeah, it was me. Hey, it was me. It was me who gave him that information. But I got that information from you know who. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you deserved it, man. You was dirty. You was hard on dudes. You was unfair. You <laughs> you was abusive. You was you abused your power. And you out there begging and crying because another dude done stole your wife. And you out there talking about you done had an accident, but you out there snatching buttons, smacking them, beat you down to the ground. Broke your leg, took your car and everything. So, man, Blizzard, man, that dude, Blizzard stayed on him for three, four days straight, man. That dude requested to be moved to another joint. He could not take it. Blizzard did not let up like he did not let up. Every time he came to work, Blizzard said, oh, how Ann doing? She doing all right? John taking care of? Man, hey, look, just imagine what that would feel like. Just imagine. The, man, he was livid. He could not take it, man. He couldn't take it. He couldn't take it, man. He, he had to get up out of there. He had to get up out of there. But I'm telling you, man, if y'all knew, he it, it was well-deserved. He deserved it. He just got back what he was dishing out. And um, he just ain't know it was going to come like that because somebody had his personal information. I'm telling you, man. And I was, I, hey, look, I was over there, man, because Erica B, Erica B crazy. Erica B is not going to let up. So... Erky B started telling other police when he left. Yeah, go ask about his wife. Yeah, go ask why John got his wife. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, it was crazy, man. And I kept saying, Lord, mercy. don't let this stuff come back to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I knew. But by this time, me and the girl had lost contact because I'm locked up and I'm, I'm on another side. I'm going to get shipped up over there. So I ain't talked to her in a minute. I know when he went home running his mouth, I know in her mind she acknowledged it. That information had to come from me. Or it, it crossed her mind, you know, that it had to come from me because it was so detailed. You know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Erky B, man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, it, it, it's crazy in there if you get somebody personal information because they got all yours. They got all yours. They talk about your business. They talk about what you locked up for. They call you this. They call you that. You say you're a murderer. You, you, I mean, they do all of that. So fair exchange ain't no robbery. You know what I'm saying? But when it come back to you, oh, man, they have a fit if you know their real name. You yeah, catch a CEO coming around there, their last name Jones or something. It's a uh, dude. You say, hey, Daryl Jones. 
Hey man, what you what, who what? Yeah, you might go to jail. You know what I'm saying? Or come by there, lad named Jones say, hey, Missy Jones. What? Who, who told you? Wait, hey, 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 who, come here. Who you know? You know what I'm saying? It's like you cussing them. You know what I'm saying? It's like you cussing them, man. You calling them with the name that their parents gave them. You cussing them. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Penitentiary is crazy, though, man. But, you know, just always remember, man, you know, karma, man, what goes around comes around. You dish it out. It might come back to you, man. You treat people fair. You don't have to worry about that. Treat people the way you want to be treated, period. And you don't have to worry about it. No matter what your job title is, no matter what your profession is, Treat people the way you want to be treated because if it come back at you or if it's coming at somebody that you love, would you accept that? Would you be all right with that? That's how you, that's the that's the barometer you use to how you treat people. Would you like it if it was coming at you like that? Would you like it if it was coming at your children like that? Would you like it if it was coming at your parents like that? Would you like it if it was coming at your siblings like that? That is the barometer that you use and how you treat people, you know what I'm saying? And, um... Yeah, you know what I'm saying? If you got a conscience. See, I had a conscience. That's what kept me from trying to, you know, do some flim flammery with Doyle. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you, you got to have a conscience, man. You just got to have one, period. You know, and you got to be fair, man. You got to be fair no matter uh, how much you want that velocity to seep in your veins, man. You got to you gotta fight it off, man. You got to fight that stuff off you, man. You know, if you want that comedy to come back around, man. But anyway, man, hopefully this video was enlightening for y'all. Hopefully y'all got something out of this, you know. And um, like I say, man, it's a, it's a blessing in every lesson. And the blessing is what I just told you, man. Treat people the way you want to be treated, man. And if, if you do that, you know, um, even through the, through the bad times, man, you always remember that the bad times are just temporary, man. It's going to get better. It's going to get better, especially if your karma is good. It's going to get better. You know what I'm saying? But, um, uh... Let me see. Yeah, I see y'all in 24 hours, man. If y'all gonna show up, y'all gonna show up and show out. Is y'all gonna hit that like button? Is y'all gonna leave me a comment? Is you gonna talk to me so I can talk back to you? Let me know, man. We on the road to 100K, man. 100, 100K. Let's go, let's go. We should have been there and beyond. I don't know if YouTube doing some type of flim flammery, skull duggery, lasting it, Tom food. I don't know. But all I do know is we stay strong, if we stay united, and we keep pushing this positive energy, it's going to bust wide open sooner or later. And guess what? I ain't going to stop. long as y'all here, I'm going to be here, man. Y'all show up, man, and I'm going to show out. Peace and love out there. Y'all be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man, and duck them hooks, man. Y'all see them gloves back there. I'm getting a new background, y'all. I'm just starting. Y'all see what's going on, but we slipping and ducking, man. Boom, 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 boom. We out here. The Banky Special. Yeah. Pure delicious. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.